Australia has slightly reduced its debt by $17 billion four months after the budget that will ultimately save Australians $80 billion in interest payments over the next 10 years. Joining us live now, Shadow Finance Minister Jane Hume. Jane, good to see you. So, uh, gross debt down, a bigger surplus now revealed by Treasury. Is this, as the government claims, down to spending restraint? Pete, this is obviously a very selective drop from the government on its final budget outcome and I'll be commenting more about the final budget outcome when all of the data is revealed later this week. But what we can say is how much more would the debt have been reduced by had the government not spent an additional $315 billion over the last three budgets, which is what we've seen. In fact, they've spent... $4 for every $1 that they have saved. And we know that because the revenue that's come in has essentially been caused by two things, high commodity prices and that insidious bracket creep caused by high inflation. So it hasn't been the hard work of Jim Chalmers to get the budget under control. He hasn't cut his savings, as households have done. In fact, uh, it's been the hard work of Australians that have gone to pay for the two very small surpluses that he's delivered that clearly haven't all been translated into paying off the debt. That's a real shame because it will have cost Australians more over the long run. Yeah, I guess um, higher um, immigration uh, leads to a higher tax collect as well. Jim Chalmers, though, he claims this gross debt now 10% lower than what Labor inherited from your old government. That's, that's how they're explaining it away. Well, actually, when the, uh, just before COVID hit, we had a structurally balanced budget, which was a really important, uh, you know, a really important milestone to make. That was what gave us the flexibility and the resilience during COVID to be able to be so generous and to keep uh, Australians' businesses in business and employees in jobs. Uh, that was the COVID, that's the real COVID legacy. Uh, unfortunately, what we've seen since that period of time is a deterioration of economic conditions. We've now got stagnant economic growth. We've still got persistently high homegrown, sticky inflation, and we've got productivity that's going backwards. So that does not augur well for the years ahead. And certainly that's being felt in people's hip pockets. We know that the cost of living is still the number one issue that Australians are feeling right now. I'm down here in uh, the Western Districts of Victoria in the seat of Wannon with Dan mm. 10 this week, and that's exactly what we're talking right. about, the cost, of, the cost of living, the cost of doing business, and also some of those insidious taxes that we've been talking about that are being uh, inflicted on both businesses and farmers. I thought that background looked familiar, Jane. Uh, now onto the opposition leader, your <laughs> boss today, Peter Dutton. He's to unveil his nuclear plan. Will it include the costs and energy bill savings? Uh, well, I'm not going to preempt uh, Peter Dutton's any any Peter Dutton, any of Peter Dutton's announcements, as you would probably understand. But the coalition has been very clear from its uh, very early on in this term of government that we need to find a new emissions-free baseload power source in order to uh, fill the gap when coal that we've relied on for decades leaves the system. Now, there needs to be transition fuel, and that's all about gas. And there is also renewables are going to, compl uh, going to continue to play an important part in our energy mix. But it's about getting the energy mix right. And most importantly, when we talk about the costs of our energy system, we have to be able to compare apples with apples. Now, the government keep, you know, pointing to the fire and, and, and yelling, fire, fire, but then what they're not doing is actually delivering a cost on their entire energy mix. That's what we will be doing. Rather than this renewables only, all eggs in one basket approach, we'll be making sure that there is an energy right. mix that is going to deliver all zero right. emissions, but at the same time, that baseload power that we know is necessary to keep prices down. Okay.